Hey everybody, thanks for joining us today. My name is Andrea and I'm part of the Proud Pet team. And with me today is the one, the only, the honorable Mr. Adam Thomas. Uh, now, before we get started, uh, quick, uh, some quick tips. Uh, as always, our webinars are recorded, so we will be sending out the recording uh, when uh, this is over, most likely early next week uh, or tomorrow morning if you guys get lucky. Uh, so if you have to drop off, don't worry about it. Uh, you can always watch it back uh, from, uh, from your last viewing point. Uh, you can always share it, of course, if you really, really like it. Uh, we will be taking questions. Uh, you can drop those uh, preferably uh, on the Q&A box if you see it on your Zoom panel. Uh, and I'll also be monitoring the chat if you guys want to talk there. Uh, with that said, Adam, you're on. I think he's just trying to unmute himself because I muted him. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> Sorry about that. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. Uh, uh, hi, everyone. My name is Adam Thomas, and uh, thank you for joining us today. I am really excited to bring to you guys uh, um, a lot of the thoughts I've been having over the last uh, few months, specifically around hiring and bias and and heuristics and 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 risk um putting and putting it all together so hopefully uh everyone here can hire better talent uh, so with all that said let's begin this journey product hiring is broken and we're going to talk about how you attract better talent so Let's just start with the problem. The best practices to hire product people are broken. And as a result, uh, you're losing the war for talent. Cliche as it sounds, sometimes the cliche is the, is the correct term, right? And when you lose, <laughs> you get nothing, nothing, right? Or maybe it's worse, right? Bad hires cost a ton of money. If you didn't know, uh, the average cost of putting together a hiring plan, getting folks in, the time spent uh, in terms of hiring someone is $240,000. That's if the hiring goes well, you that's what you're investing, right? For the most part. I think it really changes folks' minds uh, to see the number, so here it is. And because of that, right, that 2,400 is a really big invested, investment, right? Um, if, if, if I told you that uh, I gave you $240,000 to make an investment into something, I'm sure you have a billion ideas that would come to mind. Well, whenever you're hiring, that's what you're doing. So one of the things I want you to get out of this webinar is that why that 240,000 plus back best practices really, uh, really, uh, really don't really uh, play well with the risk that you're taking, right? Here are two things that are important. One, what are the two realities that we face to make best, that makes most best practices useless right i think there are two things that we all have to deal with as product people as people in this room um that we have to we have to uh we have to own um because while the best practices are best practices and they do work under certain circumstances these circumstances aren't the circumstances in which most of us are playing um so we're going to make some adjustments Right, and and the other thing um, that I want you to get out of this webinar is that when you make these adjustments, right, um, that are tied to the reality that you're faced, we can take those best practices and make them good for you. Um, one thing I want to emphasize pretty early here is that um, your mileage may vary. Uh, Pretty much the gist out of this talk, right, should probably be your mileage may vary, right? So 
um, if you were hoping for a silver bullet, uh, if you were hoping for the, the magic wand uh, to uh, wash over your recruitment process right now, um, I can't offer that. But I can give you some ideas on how to make it better so that uh, both you and the candidates you're, you're looking for um, have spend a better use of their time and you can get a better understanding of, of if, they go, if they're going to work for you or not. So who am I? My name's Adam. Uh, nice to meet you. Uh, I've been building teams since 2009. Um, I had my first startup uh, called The Gamer Studio back in 2007, 2008. Um, 2009 is when I hired my first uh, designer to, to come and, and clean up my mess. Um, and ever since then, I've been trying to get better at this. Um, uh, over uh, after I sold that business, um, I've been pretty much living in the world of, of product management, and I've been having to deal with these best practices as both uh, a candidate and the person hiring, and even the the uh, the person uh, overseeing the hiring um, over the last ten years. Uh, my last thing that I did uh, was building the product team at Informed.co. Right, so let's talk about it. Right, hiring is hard. Um, I think I, I speak. I can speak for everyone here, where you know that trying to get someone in the door isn't something that is taken lightly. Right, um, when it comes to folks trying to to get something done, it. Uh, it's a lot of work. Um, it's, it's just a really a lot of work. Right, so let's talk about it. We got two realities. I spoke about two realities before. There are two, uh, and I think both of these realities are something that we have to deal with as product people, especially when it's time to, to make the hire that you need. I boil it down into these two pictures, basically, right? Um, because, right, look, let's say you walk into your office and you realize your prayer has been answered. You have the ability to add headcount to your team. Uh, now what, right? I'm sure you've, you've been in the, some of the product leaders in here and some of the aspiring product leaders have seen this um, and you, you, you're, ra ready, re uh, you're, <laughs> you're ready to go. And the issue here then becomes, uh, hey, we don't have time <laughs> to understand who to hire uh, because guess what? Hiring is a part-time job on top of your full-time job. So, you don't have a lot of time and a, definitely not a lot of mental space to to really focus on bringing this higher in and secondly uh product is different everywhere um your product team is not the same as my product team for the most part we can't even agree on leveling systems much less uh what uh product management and i say that with quotes um is at your at, at everyone else's job like we can't come up with a, a solid uh definition of it so we have to understand that product is different everywhere and if you don't uh, if you aren't very clear about what product is at your place uh, of employment or in your company then um you're pretty much sunk even using the best practices because you don't know how to adjust them. Because if I asked three product managers, um, uh, the product director and the head of product, what product management and what their areas of responsibility are, um, I'll probably get five different answers. Um, uh, I want to I want to take a break here, and I, I want. Uh, you guys to utilize the chat um, 
tell me one thing that you think is particularly different about your product management team um, that doesn't fit the best practices. I'm sure we all have something. So I'm going to give you guys a minute or two to, to get in the chat here, utilize uh, your voice, and, and uh, just type something, one or two things that are different than your, for, your, for your team that uh, isn't the, quite the same for best practice or best practice product management. All right, guys, come on. You can uh, you can get social. <laughs> There's no wrong answers. If anybody wants to jump in and be the first brave person. I wonder if people are just shy or they haven't found the chat. <laughs> well, we'll take some time. As a matter of fact, maybe I should let's let's start with an easier question. Just uh, Folks, say hello. Uh, <laughs> if you're if you're in the chat, just say hi. Oh, we got we got there an we answer. Go. A, a bunch of hellos, which is amazing. So people. There we go. Hello. Now we've taken the stress out of the chat. Uh, there we go. The there we go. And now I see. That was a good icebreaker. There we go. Yeah. You know, uh, got to get used to ice breaking first. I broke rule one, but that's fine. We're on this journey together. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, we, we do have one from Matt at the very top that says uh, some teams I work with are very focused on hiring for activities um, and some are focused on hiring for skills. Oh, that's interesting. I, Matt, I, I'd love for you to go deeper there. Um, when you say activities, are you just meaning hard skills? And, and when you say skill, what do you what do you mean there? Because uh, that's. That's it's a curious thing. So while we wait uh, for Matt, I'm sure he's going to uh, to let us know. Um, a good question to your question, which is, what do you mean by best practices? Well, I think uh, as you as you scan the internet and you say you type in, how do I hire for product management? Um, you'll get a rash of uh, of uh, articles and blogs and things that pretty much uh, copy either Google or Facebook or um, basically take the take the uh, method from uh, uh, what it, uh, what is that book um, uh, how to how to crack uh, the PM job the yeah, job that's the, the one. <laughs> Yes, yes, that's the one, right? That's so the so one. They'll, folks will take, uh, kind of take those things and, and like try to come up with some process um, that uh, comes up. And um, I'll talk about when we, when we get a little further into this, this conversation that we're having, I'll talk about three of the things that pretty much come out um, from that process, from what I've seen, uh, what I've seen companies and, and uh, teams do. Um, from from my experience, and uh, we'll see if that matches up. Um, it's actually the next slide. Um, so, uh, at a high level, the best practice piece is really just kind of what the what the current kind of soup is when it comes to uh, product management, which is generally um, uh, process that I'll talk about in the next slide. Cool. So Matt wrote back, by the way, and he said activities are things like making roadmaps, grooming the backlog, stuff like that. Well, skills are more oh, communication oh, oh, oh. skills. Oh, I don't writing want to get, skills. It, <laughs> can't code. Uh, I, oh, the first two things are two things that I have a lot of ideas, <laughs> but they are completely uh, um, off of uh, this uh, this talk about. Uh, what grooming the backlog is, or or what uh, a roadmap generally is, um, yeah. So, but that said, I, I um, yeah, I don't. I guess the truth is, I don't. I don't really know kind of how to answer that. Like um, the 
I guess you're 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 looking for particular needs that fit your your strategy or um, whatever. And I guess I I do talk about that a little bit. Um, actually, yeah, I talk about that a little bit more uh, moving forward. So I guess you'll just have to 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 wait and see. <laughs> uh, I think I think uh, I think the presentation actually answered that. Now that I think about it. Excellent. So we got a few responses to your actual question, which was, um, what do teams uh, do that's differently? Uh, and we have things like, we are responsible for creative workflows and project management tasks. Oh, fuck mm. you. <laughs> that's all outside <laughs> the, the product uh, roles. Uh, we got uh, each org has their, oh yeah, that's, no, that's not a, an actual answer. Um, my organization has a product team that manages all of our company's products using a project centric approach with two development teams working on various products uh, and projects. We also do not have a firm definition of what our products are. I also want to hug you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that sounds very familiar. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, um, um, that's, that's quite different from, you know, if you look up what product management is and I, I, I'm, and what the a lot of a uh, lot of pieces on on medium would tell you what product management is right um i, I would bet that's actually far more realistic than um what you'll probably find um does anybody else just a reminder of the question right um what's different about your product team than uh you know kind of what people think about product management what makes your team different i'll give us uh, so one more minute or so uh we have what it says product owners in my current org are only acting as business analysts at some level. POs do not have authority to manage and prioritize a backlog, only write features and communicate business uh, requests. Are they a PO then? <laughs> that's, a, that's a great. Are they a PO? Uh, interesting. <laughs> uh, Confusing, right? I'm sure if you you talk to people at conferences, will go, Ooh, what wow, a product owner is. Yeah, what is a product owner? I right? think I think we need is, Melissa Perry uh, on this call. Now. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. No, if, if Melissa starts going down her uh, product owner path, uh, we're in for a <laughs> we're in for quite a long one. Um, uh, yeah, no. Um, yeah, so like, uh, you know, I'm already hearing different like ways of doing product development, right? Like product owners, right? That, that probably talks about safe, um, more project management, project management e type of style, right? That, that, um, that kind of speaks to, right? Somebody running some, some sort of different type of agile process, right? There's different, there's, um, there are different, things between all of us, right? Um, so uh, it's important before you hire, right? If, if, if you're kind of sitting here confused and wondering what's going on um, and you're there, um, consider the person that you, you, uh, you try to hire, right? Um, and that brings us to the next piece of this uh, lovely presentation. Um, Back to what Chris was was uh, talking about, um, right? There are three things I think that uh, places where the the biggest mistakes are made when it comes to whatever the best practice is, uh, or whatever best practices that uh, teams make, right? Generally, uh, the way I've seen it done in a lot of places is there is a uh, there's a job there's a job description that's put out, right? Um, then there's a phone screen, then there's, um, maybe there's an interview uh, where there'll be product hypotheticals and brain teasers. Um, and then there's a, like a take home um, kind of exam thing that, that folks are doing. Um, that's, and, that's, and then there's a, maybe a culture interview uh, and then we're, we're out of here, right? Like then it's time to make the selection, right? Um, I really want to focus on three of these things. Right? I want to really focus on the job description. I want to focus on uh, product hypotheticals and brain teasers, and I want to focus on take-home exams. And why doing it uh, the way that 
most folks write about it and your job uh, is probably bad. So let's talk about job description. Um, let's keep it simple here, right? What's on here is, right, um, because we're out of time, right? We're, we're probably gonna use the copy pasta method, right? We're, we're gonna go look at a whole bunch of uh, job descriptions that exist and we're gonna go run around and we're gonna just put it together and then we're gonna create what I call the rock star PM, right? And, and we've all seen this job description where it's, uh, you're gonna help us develop product management and uh, you're gonna, uh, <laughs> you're going to, uh, you need seven years experience in UX and five years experience in engineering and three years experience in like, who is this person? <laughs> I'd like to meet them because uh, they, they, they really don't exist. Um, right, and since every product team is different, you end up not really helping the candidate understand uh, if the job is for them or not, right? Um, it's probably one of the reasons why product gets, you know, a huge ton of, uh, just a ton of inbound when it comes to putting out product uh, uh, job descriptions or, or, or uh, calls to, to hire because um, since we're all kind of trained to ignore the JD, um, we, we just throw things, we just throw our resumes in uh, because we all know, right, chances are whatever they're saying product is, we're going to figure out during the phone screen or during the interview process. So if you have some sort of experience Right, and you might as well just throw it in there. Um, also, for the teams that are inside of these, uh, for the teams that are inside of of your uh, of your of your company, right? Um, don't forget that the job description works both as an internal and external announcement, right? Um, internally, uh, when you got the call to to add to your headcount, right? There are certain problems that exist, and um, either you, uh, you don't have the skills available or you, somebody doesn't have, you know, soft skills or maybe the leadership is less missing or maybe the strategy is off, right? Um, these job descriptions help tell your team, right, who to look for, what skills to level up on, what should they be looking for um, as they move forward in their jobs, right? Um, they work just as, it's just as important for the team internally uh, to, to see what the job description is. Uh, as the world outside. So if it's not aligned with, with what's going on um, in your company, it's a double fail. Uh, and you're actually hurting your uh, internal team um, as well as the, the bringing in all this inbound that you now have to sort out uh, as, a, as, a, as a person that's going to be making this hire. Um, so how do you get out of this? Uh, to my point earlier, right, we're all different. All of our teams are very different. So um, one thing that is incredibly important, I know to me and I know a few folks that I, I uh, associate with, is being very clear about what the, being very clear about what you're doing, who you are. Um, as uh, Seth Godin says, uh, who is this for um, and, and what is this for a lot? Uh, when he when he uh, when he talks about really nailing what uh, a description is um, for your teams, I I'm really I, I really 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 want to hammer down this point here. Um, if you don't know who you are as a product team, um, any job description that you write is really 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 <laughs> really not going to help you. Um, so. It's through that self-awareness of like really knowing who you are is how you get clear of what you're looking for or what you're really looking for. Uh, and from what I've seen, like every minute that you're really clear about the problem and who you are um, through tools like product charters um, and through writing things like problem statements, uh, you're saving yourself 10, 15, 20 minutes um, when it comes to uh, making the hire. So, I want to really hammer that point, right? Um, your team is unique. Understanding what makes your team unique and building uh, and understanding that you're hiring towards a problem. Uh, when you build a, a job description that fits that purpose, you're, uh, 
you're really saving yourself a lot of headache down the line. Okay, so next is product hypotheticals, right? Or what I call bias central. Um, since we're generally out of time when, when we're coming up with things, um, when we're trying to hire, right? Since it's a part-time job, my guess is there's no rubric uh, for uh, any type of hypotheticals or brain teasers that you're asking for. Um, you're asking your candidates to, to figure out. And this means that you, we don't really know how to grade them. Um, and because we're, we don't have a rubric or a way to understand how to, how to grade, we're allowing our biases to take over. Um, and then through that bias, we're really, uh, we're really falling back into, it forces us to fall back into asking bad questions. And uh, we're making dumb qualifications like picking metrics, like uh, what does that, uh, we're falling back into making dumb qualifications, like asking people to to give us really bad metrics, um, like, "Hey, I increased revenue by five percent," um, and if that person looks like the way you want a product manager to look, uh, that's a that's a thumbs up versus really understanding um, who that person is um, and how they help solve that problem that you have, right? You're you're basically hiring. Uh, for quote unquote culture fit, as opposed to getting true A players. Um, so I want to say this is uh, this is a stock photo, but I know one of the women in this photo. Uh, her name is Mary. Uh, she is a tremendous, tremendous, tremendous uh, business owner and operator uh, with ties in, across all types of industries. Um, if she walked into your product interview. Uh, my guess is you'd probably go, uh, how much does she really know about maintaining a roadmap? When that, that's nonsense, right? Um, it's going to lead you to hiring just the same guy, the same white guy with the, with the, with the shirt, right? We all know what the shirt is, the plaid shirt. Um, looking around the product landscape, we need more Marys. Um, and if you're looking at bias, you will not get to hire any Marys. You're really, uh, you're really going to, to hire the same person. Um, and I, again, I wanna make it clear that uh, we need Mary. Mary does not need us. Um, so remember, uh, back to building a very clear product statement, a problem statement. Um, and with that, with that very clear problem statement, you'll have the opportunity to think less about uh, You'll think less about uh, the 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 brain teasers and more about the story, right? Um, and what's really important uh, is you focusing on the story piece uh, actively. And when you're focusing on the stories, since you have a clear problem in mind, you can start looking at uh, how people use novel ways to meet to solve different problems, and that'll help you make better decisions. Um, for bonus points, record your session and then uh, listen back later. And when you do that, like you'll be able to hear even more things that may uh, help you make this decision and uh, really invest that 240000 Let's talk about the dreaded take-home test. Um, take-home tests generally over-index on asset creation, which uh, with no real context is a waste of time. Um, here's the other side of this that focuses on the part-time piece that you have. Are you really looking at these with a critical eye when, when you still need to work? Right? Like, um, whenever somebody sends back, we've, we've all made the mistake of just kind of looking at things and seeing if they, uh, if they kind of make sense to us. Um, if you're not really focusing, if you don't take the time to really take a critical eye to, to the assets, right? You're, you're just now looking at superficial things like, oh, is this, is, does this look good? Or is this, is this nice or whatever it is? Um, this is not a, <laughs> it's not a good thing. Um, and since your product development is different, 
what what does that tell you with a when it comes to that product person coming in? Um, how does that tell you how that person works, right? How does that product person work in the system that you've created or which exists in your place? Um, it doesn't tell you anything. Uh, and then this is really bad, right? Because uh, talent that is in high demand will just ignore you. Um, right, I, I know A players that like once they get to this stage, right, they're at this stage with a bunch of companies. Um, anybody that kind of fails this test is automatically getting like the BS answer, the, 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 um, the deck that's already pre-prepared. Um, and uh, those that do do the work, um, for the most part are realizing that like, hey, we just did a lot of work for free um, and are frustrated. So even if you saw some potential people that were going to work for you um, and you just didn't have space for, um, they're gonna ignore you. Uh, so when you do that next hire, it's not gonna be as easy. Um, also, everyone just did a lot of work for free. Um, which is also bad, right? That takes away the onus from the, from, uh, takes away the risk from you and then slides it over to the candidate who, right, is not in the place to just eat all of that risk. Uh, so my solution is uh, do it live, right? Um, instead of pretending like we're gonna take a look at these, at these take home assignments that are coming in, uh, schedule some time live. With, with the candidate, uh, have them, um, give them, prepare them properly, give them what they'll be doing, what they'll be asking, uh, so that those that aren't thinking or aren't good on the spot have a opportunity to really uh, get into this. Um, but uh, yeah, make it live uh, so that you can really get an understanding of how someone works. Um, in uh in the context right of of the job that they'll be doing um this can take several different forms you can have uh you know you can have a scenario that they'll come in and you can bring in different people from your from uh, from different uh, disciplines that's how i usually like to do it um you can have them come in and work for a week on a very small project um which is how some other teams like to do it right there's plenty of ways to make it live and still get an idea of how they work with people, how they uh, engage, um, which is going to be a lot of the job of, of product, right? Which is how do you keep alignment? Um, this goes without saying, uh, pretty much pay them, like please pay them. Um, this is gonna make you sharper. It's gonna make your, your, your uh, decision sharper. Um, it's going to make your ask sharper when it comes to HR or uh, the leadership team. Um, it's a good way to put pressure on you um, and also uh, make everyone else take it as seriously as they can, right? Um, adding money adds, adds a good type of pressure and tension to, to everything. And again, um, comparing that to the $240,000 that you're investing anyway, right? Um, it's really nothing. Uh, Honestly, um, compared to that two hundred forty thousand, so uh, yeah, I want you guys to remember, uh, it's two hundred forty thousand dollars to hire someone, and that's if everything works right. Two hundred forty thousand. That's what you're investing each person that you're uh, dedicating to increase headcount. Um, so be very clear, right, about what you're trying to do here. It's worth the investment of a little bit more time to to get an idea of what you're trying to what you're trying to do. Uh, and two forty aside, money aside, right? It's very key to remember that bad hires are really are really just going to end up having worse teams for you. Right? They're going to break up your culture. You're going to end up uh, losing talented people because they're going to want to start leaving. Um, and worse to the business, right? You're not getting what that headcount is supposed to be. Uh, you're not getting that solved, right? You're not solving the problem. So um, regardless if that person is there or not, problem's not solved. 
and you're going to have to spend another 240000 to to do this all over again. Right. I've, I've, from all types of levels, like I've seen this go really bad. So um, again, this is something that I really, 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 really want to harp on. Um, I've seen projects get destroyed through maniacs. I've seen teams get depressed and people walking out the door. And I've seen managers get burnt out uh, because, you know, once you make that hire, right, you're going to try to cover it up, um, which means you're, you're going to be in a worse position. Right? So uh, it's critical um, that, you know, you invest um, and you invest heavily into how you make that hire because, uh, oh, wait, no, no, no. Oh, no. I'm sorry, everyone. I made a mistake. Please hold. We're experiencing some technical difficulty. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Well, I'll get it back up in a second. Yes. No worries. These things happen. Should I, should I sing in the background and sway back and forth for everyone? Oh, yes. Yes. Fill some, t fill some time. Fill some time. <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. Thank you guys. Oh, wait, um, we're, we're, uh, we're getting close to the end here. I'm very curious. Um, which section is the, the section you learned the most uh, from? Is, was it, uh, or which one pains you the most? Is it job descriptions? Is it product hypotheses and brain teasers? Or is it the take home tests? Which one, um, uh, which piece is uh, more curious to you? So while we wait for, um, for answers to come in, uh, one thing I've been meaning to ask you, um, Adam, is what is your favorite, most incorrect take home test or interview question that you've come across? Uh, my favorite uh, bad one, and I won't uh, tell the company. I won't tell you guys the company of this. But uh, I'm not asking for the company. I'm asking for the question. Okay. 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 Yeah. I'll just the question. Uh, we're not going to get too spicy here. Was uh, uh, how would you sell a refrigerator? Interesting and weird. I love the ones that are like, if you were a product manager at Facebook or Google or whatever, what feature would you add to Google Maps? And I'm, I, I kind of just want to. My product management brain wants to ask in return but why? <laughs> like, why are you asking me what feature I would add? What problem are you trying to solve? And I see, you know, when, when I'm on Quora or Reddit or, you know, Twitter, um, these young product managers asking, oh, I wrote up this question about adding this feature to Google Maps. And they have all, you know, this entire theory behind it. And I'm just like, but did you think about why? <laughs> like, what was your point? What, what problem were you trying to solve? And it's just really odd that someone hiring a product manager wouldn't expect their first question in return to be, okay, great, but why are you trying to add any feature? That is so, yes, that is, that's so important, right? Like what we're teaching people when it comes to that is to focus on solutioning, which is the complete antithesis, antithesis uh, to, to product management for me. Right, like, um, or, and, and I think for, for most experienced product people, right, like, we're not in the solution game, <laughs> we're in the problem game. And uh, um, similar to that, when I was asked that terrible question, I started asking questions like, what, 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 refrigerators? It, this is not a hardware company. Why, like, what, what, what are we trying to understand here? Um, and, uh, I probably, I think I spent like 20 minutes asking questions and they were like, well, we were just looking for metrics, which really like made me go, oh boy. Uh, <laughs> red flag, red flag. Definitely. Uh, we have some answer to your, uh, answers to your questions. Uh, and oddly enough, um, the answers are job descriptions. Oh yeah, JDs. Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> JTs are a mess. Um, <laughs> I see Matt's in here. I, I snuck on Twitter to take a look, but yes, the the five years, uh, the 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 five year engineering, the seven year research, uh, qualified, quantified. Uh, you know, we're really customer centric here, and blah blah blah. Like, they're really really bad um, because 
we're not, it's just not very helpful. It's just not very helpful. And we're wasting a lot of time um, just trying to meet standards that shouldn't exist, right? That's, it's such a, ah, it's so infuriating. Um, can everyone see my screen? Yep. Uh, just up. a quick little trivia question. Does anybody know where this clock is from? Uh, <laughs> I wonder if anybody knows. Let's see if we get any answers. Twilight Zone? No. <laughs> Good try, James. A train station, Janabasto. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no. Incorrect, Janabasto. Try again. Um, lost. Dark. Nope. Switzerland. No. Nope. Nope. I kind of feel that it's from some like Stanley Kubrick movie. No, although very, yes, this shot feels very Kubrickish. Um, no, it's actually from Scarface. Uh, when, they're, uh, when they're counting, I think, money on the table and they don't realize that they're being watched by the government, even though like it's a bunch of like really savvy drug dealers, they don't realize the 12 is missing and a camera is in its place. And not even really a well laid camera either. Like you can see like the whiteness at the bottom and like it's very obviously like they just drilled in a hole and popped the camera in. Uh, and like every time I look at it, it just makes me laugh because it's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> so yes, a little trivia. Uh, it's from the movie Scarface, which is uh, probably my favorite bad watch. Uh, my favorite bad gangster movie watch. This is a terrible movie. Um, anyway, uh, but uh, yeah, let's be very clear, right? Um, much like that hole that was drilled, um, right? Uh, hiring a pro product is very broken. Um, in fact, uh, many tech companies are falling, failing just outright when, it's hiring, when it comes to hiring equitably, uh, which means we're missing out on so many A players. Um, and despite the statements that may have uh, been made in response to the recent police brutality, right, um, it really things have not changed, right? Um, and again, let's be very clear, as the world gets more complex, we're going to need people that are, that have a whole bunch of different experiences uh, that are A players to, to be here to help our companies grow. Um, so I, I'm referencing the plug here, uh, which is one of my favorite new, uh, one of my favorite new, uh, publications in the tech space. They, they, uh, collected all the, uh, statements made by a whole bunch of companies, uh, and, uh, are reporting that, uh, compared to, to based on their DNI reports, right, less than 4% of the employees are, are black. Um, so, right, we're missing the boat, we're missing talent, we're missing ways of thinking. Um, so, you know, when it comes to these different pieces, all of this is broken. Um, so when we talk about job descriptions, product hypotheticals and take home tests, right, we're only talking about the tip of the iceberg. Uh, as there are systemic injustices that lead to inequality everywhere as recent events clearly illuminate. Um, as we confuse bias for uh, heuristic here, which is really what we're doing when we're, when we're out of time, right? We're, we think we're using heuristics, which um, if you don't know, really is like a shortcut, right? But it's, it's somewhat of a rational shortcut. And we're confusing them with bias, right? Which, does, which really, uh, really ruins our ability to make good, uh, to make good uh, choices. Right. So if we're going to be, if we're going to make a better world, we need to work for it. Right? And that means better business outcomes as well as uh, uh, better social outcomes. Both of these things are important. So uh, getting rid of getting rid of some of these bad practices we talked about, and really changing them to mix to match your context, uh, means that you'll you'll get better results. Um, you'll get a more wide range of candidates, and then there'll be better candidates. Uh, because they'll have new and they'll have novel and interesting ways to solve the problems that you're currently facing, and then even how to view problems that the company is facing, things that you've never heard before. That again will separate you from the marketplace. Uh, that's how we solve problems, and 
Guess what, everyone? We're on the clock. So it's a way for me to, to go ahead and wrap this up. I hope we all got uh, the two realities, right? Um, we've, uh, we've gotten some ways to adjust our best practices here, um, right? Which are, uh, one, a cleaner JD through understanding, um, using a product charter to understand who uh, and what uh, we are as a product team, and then really thinking about and building proper problem statements for the job description. That's uh, getting rid of the brain teaser for the most part, unless you build a rubric, right? And if you're going to do that, right, I would pair with my HR team and I would sit down and I would rethink and fast and slow, right? That's probably gonna be the best way of doing that. But for the most part, I think most of us don't have the resources to do that uh, or the time. So switch from uh, asking these brain teasers to asking uh, people to tell stories right? Just ask them to tell stories. And, and through those stories, you'll get a better understanding of how they solve problems. Um, and then uh, instead of doing the big take-home test that swears it's three hours to do and it's really 10 hours, um, right? Switch over to a live, uh, switch over to something live that's, uh, that prepares the client, oh, I'm sorry, the client, the, the, uh, the candidate to, to actually sit down and, and really engage uh, with, with, the, with the problem that you're solving. Uh, and again, like you'll see how they work with other people on your team. Open things up a little bit. Let them talk to your, uh, some of your customer support people. Let them talk to some of your engineers. Let them talk to some of your salespeople. Um, and that'll give you an understanding of how they connect with people and again, how they solve problems. Um, all of, all of those things are ways you get stronger talent, right? Um, and the last thing is a bonus, right? If anything, you got anything out of this presentation, right? You should know that there is no magic process. There is no best practice. There is no uh, silver bullet here. Uh, hiring is hard and it's a super relational thing. And as, it, as it's a super relational thing, right? It's a very much a, it depends. Everybody take a, a drink of your water or coffee. I got to the, it depends. Took us 40 minutes, but we got there. Uh, of, uh, of, uh, of getting people in, right? Um, bias ruins the talent pool when, uh, you know, you lose ultimately at the end of the day. That's it, that's it. We're done. Uh, open for questions. All right, guys, if you ha guys have uh, any, any questions, any comments, any thoughts on the fact that Adam said that Scarface was a terrible movie, we'll be taking them now. <laughs> uh, Jana is clapping for you right now, just so you know, on the chat. Uh, Jana, I hope that, is that about Scarface or is that about? Uh, I think it was about the It Depends <laughs> or the whole thing. <laughs> Uh, I was going to say, somebody's on my side. That movie is long and bad. All right. <laughs> Any questions? Uh, peeps, don't be, don't be shy. Maybe we should start with another hello. <laughs> uh, let's see. What's a nice little icebreaker? Um, hmm. All right. What's a, what's a bad movie? Uh, uh, everyone, <laughs> Scarface. Movie. Movie <laughs> uh, Scarface. We, 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 do, we do actually have a question now. Uh, what are some of your favorite interviewing questions? As in good ones, not bad ones. Good or ones. perhaps good. both. Um, or perhaps both. I don't know. One of each. I, I think um, good ones really are much like research questions. Right, really good research questions, um, which are very, um, I think I'm, I'm looking at the chat now, right? Uh, scenario based, right? Walk me through a time. Um, walk me through a time that you, you've, uh, you've done X, right? Um, I, I like, personally, I like looking at like, uh, walk me through a time you failed or walk me through a time you, uh, um, things didn't quite go your way something along those lines, um, because I think you learn a lot. Um, well, one, there's not a PM that has been doing the job that hasn't failed, right, um, for any period of time, right? It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Um, and seeing how 
honest someone is uh, about that failure uh, or how deep, how deep they want to dig about that failure. Uh, Austin tells me, you know, who they are uh, and, and how they, how they, uh, how self-aware they are, uh, how well they work with teams. What do they do to patch it up? Um, it, it, there's so many things that come from, um, you know, kind of talking about uh, things that didn't go well um, that, uh, really will lead you to understanding a lot about who a person is. Uh, so like for me, that's, that's one of the big things, um, is, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, having them tell me a story around some failure or some, uh, something that didn't go well. And like, you know, ultimately what you want to get out of that too, is like, what was the redemption part, right? How did you, how did you, how did you, uh, fix the, the issue? Um, bad questions. There are so many. Um, uh, much like, you know, uh, much like talking to customers, anything that's like a yes or no, um, or anything that strays away from the problems they're trying to solve or anything that's um, just kind of silly. Uh, uh, not silly and fun, but just like, why did you ask that? Uh, it doesn't make any sense. Um, that the refrigerator one is such a good one because it's so silly. Like I'm not even a salesperson. You're asking me to come in and do product. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, a lot of the hypotheticals, right? Uh, tell me about a coffee cup or like, tell me how many gas stations are in uh, the country. Like I hate those. Um, because they like it claims to ask the, to, to, it claims that there are ways to to help people figure out how you think, but right these eso esoteric like odd things that are happening um, in the world really don't like how do you even answer that question? Um, either you're super well prepared because it's a it's a brain teaser that uh, you know everyone writes the answer to. Right, like the the how many balls are how many rubber balls are in an airplane, right? That's 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 a study question. Um, or people are just gonna be like, what the what, what, what are you talking about? I don't, I don't okay. Uh, what are the planes? I guess I don't I don't know. So yeah, it just gets really silly. Um, and for the most part, you don't even have a rubric to to judge these questions. Um, you're just kind of following what Elon Musk said, which for all intent and purpose, it's bad. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's bad, everyone. Don't listen to Elon. That, that may be a discussion for another time. Um, yeah. we, we have some other questions here. Um, and this one's really interesting. What do you think is more important, uh, domain expertise or the actual product management experience? Product management experience. Um, does, no, does knowing the domain actually make a difference or the industry make a difference? It can on the edges, but I, I, I think for the most part, um, well, I guess this is a, this is also an, it depends. What product team are you going into um, is, is extremely important. Um, if you're the sole PM coming in um, and really trying to get something going, domain, domain expertise is probably way more important. Um, but if you're building a product, like if you're just joining a product team in motion, your, your expertise on how to do product um, in different and novel ways serve a way bigger, uh, is, it serve, solves a way bigger problem more than likely uh, than, uh, than having domain expertise because domain expertise is already there. Um, and probably uh, their domain expertise is it's, it's, it's going to be different than yours and you're going to probably have to end up spending the next six months learning about the stuff anyway. So based on how they do it, what they're, how they fit in, in whatever world that you're in. Um, yeah, it's going to take you probably six months to figure out. So, um, uh, as opposed to like the product stuff, right? The product stuff doesn't change, right? Like you're going to need to facilitate somewhere. Um, you're going to need to, uh, look through qualitative data to, to find patterns and trends. 
um, you're going to have to learn how to bring people together and how to translate, uh, you know, um, for folks that aren't in the room. All this stuff is, is stuff that uh, is good for any job anywhere. So um, for the most part, uh, product stuff uh, outside of the edge case of like joining in as head of product somewhere. They need somebody that has that domain expertise to, to help us out. Excellent. Um, with that, we're almost at the hour. Um, there are still quite a few questions um, that are coming through, but I think what we'll do is we will send them over to Adam um, and he can always answer them later, if that's okay. Yes, uh, and I, I just want to say, uh, yeah, I'm also on Twitter. Uh, you can send them there. You can at the Honorable IT. You can send them uh, by email to adam at theadamthomas.com or adam.thomas at hey.com and I'll be happy to answer. Um, or just reach out. Like I'm here. I don't mind. Uh, <laughs> happy to talk. Awesome. Thank you, uh, everyone, for joining in. Thank you, Adam, so much for your time today. Uh, we will be back next month. Um, so stay tuned for our next webinar uh, and have, a, I guess, a great Friday <laughs> tomorrow. And then we're done with the week. Um, as I said, we will be sending out the recording early next week. Uh, so uh, keep an eye on your emails. See you later, everyone. Bye.